Good evening, class. I thought I'd give the second part of week two lecture as it deals with uh, Henry James and the right thing. So what we're going to do is look a little bit at a particular work. It is a little lengthier than some of the ones um, that you've had to read thus far. Uh, the Real Thing is a short story, obviously by Henry James, first syndicated by S.S. McClear in multiple American newspapers and then published in the British publication Black and White in April of 1892. So <clears throat> we're really dealing with, with both of these authors this week, we're dealing with the difference, as you tell on the screen, between realism and modernism, which are two terms that you can should know as it gets closer to um, exam one. Sort of keep those in mind to see here what they, what they represent. Um, modernism, you know, believe that people make their own meaning in the world, believe that a single reality can be determined through the observation of nature. Uh, realism also emphasizes application Absolute, absolutism. Uh, modernism argued cultural relativism. Uh, modernism rebelled against 19th century academic and historicist traditions, traditional forms of art, architecture, literature, religious faith, social organization, and daily life. Basically outdated. Um, the Real Thing and other stories published by McClellan this story often read as a parable plays for the real, real reality and illusion dichotomy that fascinated James, especially in the later stages of his career, where the illustrator who narrates the story, the genuine article proves all too useless for spiritual purposes. The story portrays the unfortunate events of a society in which reality and representation are closely intertwined in ways that make art a difficult project disentangled the two. So a basic plot summary of the real thing by Henry James is that we have an unnamed, we have a narrator, an unnamed illustrator, and a starring painter hires a faded genteel couple, the monarchs, as models after they have lost most of their money and must find some line of work. They are the real thing in that they perfectly represent the aristocrat type, but they prove inflexible for the painter's work. 
he comes to rely much more on two lower class subjects who are no, nevertheless more capable. Oriante, an Italian, and is from a lower class English one. The illustrator only had to get rid of the monarchs, especially after his friend and fellow artist Jack Harley criticizes the work in which monarchs are represented. Harley says that the pair has hurt the narrative's art, perhaps permanently. In the final line of the short story, the narrator says he's content to have paid the price for the memory. Some major themes in this particular work by Henry James. James plays with the exact meaning of the real thing throughout the story's plot, which was suggested to him by George Dua Morlet. The monarchs may be the real thing when it comes to country house visits and drawing room conversations. But the Italian Oriente and that lower class English woman, Miss Crumb, are just as much the genuine art of the professional model. Late in the short story, the monarchs desperately try to keep their jobs by actually becoming servants to the narrator. Miss Crumb and Oriente in superb example of Jasonian Chizeth. Commentators have noted a bit of fantasy wish fulfillment in the tale. The painter is hired to illustrate a series of novels by the rarest of the novelists, who long neglected by the vulgar and dearly prized by the attendant, had the happy fortune of seeing late in life the dawn and then the full light of higher criticism, an estimate in which, on the part of the public, there was something really of expedition. James' own laudatory criticism would come only most harmoniously. Critics have generally praised what one of them called one of James's neatest tales, important as poignant fiction, aesthetic parable, anti-aristocrat satire, and sunken autobiography. That James was able to fit so complex a subject into under 10,000 words was a genuine triumph of his own by now completely mature technique. James does not make it into an arid demonstration of a debated, debating point. Characters all come alive as fully individualized creations. The incompetent monarchs are sympathetic, and the narrator himself is memorable for his increasingly depressed, desperate, but ultimately futile attempts to help them. The, the class system, the upper class, the rich are sort of flipped. Uh, we see that the monarchs are basically lost their, their money. They're looking to do anything, obviously, to gain that money back. But in return, just because they once came from money or had money, I'm not really good at helping our illustrator here produce forms of art. Nevertheless, the lower class, the Italian Oriente and Ms. Trum, the lower class English woman, don't come from a lot of money. Do actually help the illustrator produce better artwork. So yeah, as you can tell, you can see that the, the class systems are sort of flipped in a lot. Uh, we also get a good bit of this realism versus modernism uh, in play here as well. So hopefully this piece of uh, fiction, we were able to get through it. Uh, I look forward to reading uh, your response, not only to one of the two questions, but also how you reply to one of the two uh, answers one of those two questions based on one of your peers or your partners in the class. And I hope everybody has a great, wonderful, long weekend. This will be sort of our last holiday weekend until Thanksgiving. So uh, kind of keep that in mind. Week three um, is already up. As you can go ahead and click on that so we can see what all is entailed for week three.
how do we Word fiction is there if you want to kind of go that. Um, now again, you're going to click here. Um, one of these two, based on the reading, reading, answer the questions in about 125 words. And then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to create a journal entry to be able to post your answer to one of those two questions. Now, keep in mind, like I said in the first video, comment section seems to be only working on my end. Uh, you're not necessarily going to be able to hit a comment section on a peer's uh, particular post. So what you're going to have to do to get full credit, obviously, is you're going to have to go back. You're going to have to see once everybody starts posting. Hopefully, um, the majority of the class will start posting their uh, their response before Sunday, so that it give everybody enough time to come back, read through some of those response responses, and pick the one that you want to respond to. But by doing so, you're going to, have to create another journal entry, and you're going to have to put somewhere in the title or somewhere in the actual um, body of, of your work, who you, who you are responding to, because otherwise I'm not going to know. And that's way you can get, you know, up to the 100 points based on, you know, proofreading, editing, making sure you really read and answered the question that it's asking you. And I'm really grading you based on these seven things. Um, so as you can tell, if you miss any characteristics in your posting based on the grading characteristics above, you will be losing 15 points for each characteristic. So be careful of that. It's basically going to be graded out of seven. That's going to determine your grade. So if you get a seven out of seven, obviously you get 100. If you get a six out of seven, we can do the math there. It's going to be 15 points from that. It's about a Double check, just so y'all can have a little piece of mind here. Yes, 85, 86, so I'll round up there, and that'd be an 86. If you did five out of a seven, you'd have a 71. If you did four out of seven, that'd be 57. So you're basically filling anything four or below. So hopefully nobody would get four or below. Uh, they would get the high, higher end of the numbers. Um, just make sure that you are reading the material so you're able to not only answer your question in 125 words, but you also pick a particular classmate's uh, post and respond to it in 125 words as well. Be careful of just giving, yes, I like, like the story, no, I didn't like the story, as you answer not only your questions, but also uh, your particular classmates question. So if you look here, I have um, and that's how you would do it. You would have uh, Williams as her particular first post, which she did, and then she went back and answered on somebody else's, but we have to kind of see who she answered on. Um, and that's sort of kind of the, the issue. She's replying to Dallas. So make sure you put who you're replying to so I can give you credit for your particular, not only posting yours, and um, the reply to one of your particular classmates. After that, I mean, she's already got pretty much 50% of her grade because 50% of it was just posting hers. Now I have to go back and kind of read both her particular answer and the one that she replied to. And as long as uh, you know, it meets the criteria of these seven items, she'd be on her way to her A. I hope. And I hope that's you know for everybody. I know the quiz, several folks didn't make 
uh, last week. You answer it. Pop up at the end, so you can check yourself before I actually check yourself when it deals with the quiz. Generally, quizzes are ten questions, for the most part, which means they're ten points a piece. I try to get partial credit where I can. Um, where I can't, I mean, obviously, you're not getting the full credit. You're either getting zero because you don't have it right. You're getting the full ten points because you're getting it right. Or are you getting somewhere in the middle of that if you have something I can give you partial credit on um, when it deals with the quizzes? So just make sure you by this Sunday so you're not starting week three with a little grade. Um, going back, looking into here are some e-text readings. And then the novella, which is The Pearl by John Steinbeck. You want to read the first three chapters or basically the first four pages. So when you click on the site, it's going to pull up the novella. And pages on the actual text, not the page up here, because as you can tell, I'm basically on page six and seven here, but it's showing four. So you want to read all of this up to chapter three. For the most part, the chapters go fairly fast. So you want to read through chapter three uh, for week three. Chapter three is a little lengthy, it seems, but not too bad if you start early enough. Week four, you would pick up and read four through six, which I believe will cover the rest of the novel or the rest of the novella. So in a lot of ways, when you look at it, you have about 90 pages of reading or when you combine week three and week four together. Probably what I would do, honestly, if, you, if reading is not your thing, I would do this because you know we got 90 pages you got to read in the next two weeks. I would start doing sort of a daily schedule of this is how much I need to read. So let's say, you know, hypothetically, let's say you start because week three is open. So let's say you start reading a little bit today. And really, week three starts next week and then you have week four that would start on the 11th. So if you look at this point, we would have, ooh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. Okay. Um, it looks like you'd have about 18 days really to get chapters one through three, and then, you know, finish up the novels for the novella of four through six. So 90 day or 90 pages divided by 18 days. If you can read starting today, of course, if you can read about five pages starting today, which is the first of September, then you should be done with this particular novella by the time we get to the end of week four, in the beginning of week five, uh, which would be about the 18th of September or so. If you wait until next week, then you're going to have to add a little bit more pages because this is, because again, if you wait to start reading this, you're going to have to add. So let's say that you wait until um, Labor Day to start reading um, this novella, you would have in 18 days, you would have about 14 days to read these 90 pages. So now it's going to increase. You'd have to at least read about six pages a day, if not more, to be done within that two week time span. So again, you want to smarter and not harder. I wouldn't wait, obviously, this is just me, 
I wouldn't wait until September 9th to try to read the first three chapters. Because if you wait to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and plus you still got a quiz next week, it's due next Sunday. You got to read 40 pages in three days. That's going to be, you're going to have to at least read 13 pages each one of those three days. If you wait until Saturday next week to read four pages, and you do the math there. You have to do 20 pages. And if you wait to do it all on Sunday, then you got a lot of reading to do on top of um, the quiz that deals with the first three chapters and then the other textbook reading that you had to do in your e-text. So you're looking at at least, you know, a lot of stuff that you have to do there at the very last minute. So I wouldn't wait until the last minute to start on this novella. I would get to it as soon as possible um, because the second quiz is going to be due on the 11th. It's going to be a, a true and false quiz. Some folks think that those are easier. And, and really, it all depends on how well the, the first three chapters, those first 40 pages. Um, looking at week four, we want to finish the novella by the time we get to the 18th of September. And we'll have a assignment that deals there, which would be due on the 18th. I have to get ready. Um, five is going to be the assessment week. That's when we finish the fiction section. That's where uh, the fiction exam is going to be due on Wednesday of that week, which I believe is the 21st. And then your fiction paper, your first essay, which will be due the Sunday of that week, which is the 25th. And then on the 26th of September, we start five weeks of poetry. So moving along, like I said, enjoy the Labor Day weekend because that's the last holiday we're going to have until Thanksgiving. So we pretty much have to go the rest of September or all of October and a good bit of November before we have another long, lengthy break. I hope everybody has had a great week two. I hope week one wasn't too uh, terribly stressful. And I hope week three, uh, the good grades and the momentum continues as we go through week three to week four. Basically, by the time we get to week four, we would be here um, for about a month. I will um, let you know that during week four is going to be the first sort of grade checkpoint that we're going to have to, that all instructors are going to have to send to the college. So if you are got a D or lower, you're probably going to get uh, a phone call or an email, snail mail from somebody at the college wanting to know why your grade is low. Uh, if you're part of a dual enrollment, you're probably going to get some um, email, some discussion from your high school coordinator and stuff about why your grade is so low. You have another uh, checkpoint around midterm, which would be week eight. And then the final checkpoint, which will basically be when we turn in the final semester grade of the class, will happen um, the last week of class. So really, the first two checkpoints are sort of, hey, if you need to you know, get your grade up higher, if there's something that you're not doing that you should be doing to get your grade higher, then I mean, you've got basically eight weeks to do that. Um, I would say if your grade is continuing to slip by the time we get to the middle of October, which would be, again, we eight midterm week. Then you might want to start doing some soul searching and thinking about um, should I withdraw this class and take it again in the spring when I'm a little bit more focused and I can get my grades up. Uh, because as it gets closer to the final seven weeks of our semester, things are going to, one, it's going to get kind of quick. Uh, two, you know, we're, we got the research paper we're going to talk about after midterm and all that stuff. We get into drama. We we'll talk about plays, that type deal. Um, so it, I wouldn't say it necessarily gets any more challenging. It could, especially if you're not doing so well the first eight weeks. Then the last seven weeks are not going to be really uh, kind to you. Um, but you're going to have to keep up with the weekly reading. 
you got to have to make sure that you're following instructions. If you don't understand anything, you're going to need to either get with smart thinking. You're going to have to come see me either for virtual tutoring or in-person tutoring. You're going to have to email. You're going to have to send drafts of your essays. Uh, you're going to have to read the material, take your own notes, watch the videos, um, you know, read, read and watch some of this stuff multiple times. You know, you're just going to have to make the efforts if you want to get the C or higher in the class. Um, but I'm here to help. I want to help. I don't really mind. So if nobody speaks up or nobody sends me an email or nothing like that, I'm just going to assume that you understand what you've been doing from week one to week two and so on and so forth. So if you need help, please let me know. Let me know before it gets too out of hand where it's hard to get the help that you need in a timely manner. I mean, don't, you know, don't freak out. Let's say Sunday when you have to do this uh, particular journal or this discussion post and you start blowing up my email, it's due at 1159 and you start blowing up my email at 945 at night. Um, there's not really much I can do at that point considering you had the entire week of week two to get help. And not only that, this, you know, I open up the next week's folder uh, half week during week one. So you basically had, you know, half a week of week one and all week of week two to get help. So if you're waiting to the last minute, that's time management and procrastination on your part. That's not on me. Um, so you might want to re you know, rethink your strategy. Um, obviously, this is not high school. They're not going to necessarily wait till last minute throw a couple of things down and be done in 30 seconds or 30 minutes or whatever it's going to be. Um, you're not going to be able to do too well. In this format of the course, if you wait until Saturday and Sunday to do a lot of these assignments, um, not too many people can speed read and speed read for comprehension that they will need to do well on the weekly assignments. Most folks that think they can speed read can't because when you know I try to test them or quiz them on what they read, they can't remember anything they read. Uh, well, I can speed read really well, yeah, but you can't retain really well. You can speed read all you want. But it's not going to help you write that you know three or four page essay. Uh, you can speed read through six particular pieces of short fiction, you know, two days before you got to take that uh, first exam. But if you can't remember any of the quotes or don't know who's talking to who, or don't remember any of the characters, you can't find any terms, then what good is the speed read? It shows that you can speed read. It doesn't show that you can read and keep information that's going to help you get a good grade. Um, so be cautious of that. This class is one of those that it does take some time, but if you do a little bit each day, it won't be so bad. Now, if you wait until the very end to do stuff, that's when you know, stress is going to kick in. Uh, that's where you feel a little bit more compelled or you want to be a little bit more froggy to try to do devious things, um, like try to cheat or hire somebody to do your work. And it usually comes back to backfire you at the end at some point. Uh, so please do not go that route. If you manage your time and keep up with everything that you got to do week to week, you should do fairly well in this course. All right, so that's going to be enough for me. I hope everybody is enjoying some of the reading that we're doing. Um, I look forward to doing another one of these uh, lecture videos uh, next week. Let me know if you want to join, if you want to be sort of, uh, you know, be a student involved with one of these uh, lecture videos. I can send out a link. We can get more people in to have sort of like a virtual discussion. Sometimes that helps better uh, than just to hear me talk for 30 minutes or whatever. I like to have other people actually in the discussion. If you think that you can make one of these, let me know what a good day and time would be, and I would send out a um, invite where you can join when, we, when I start to put the red light on this and record it. Um, otherwise, have a great weekend, be safe, um, and 
Enjoy.